Is there a problem? I'm with a client. <laughs> One of the other muscle-bound animal guys grabbed the back of said client's chair and tipped him forward out of his seat. He reached out to catch himself, yanking my TV trays down with him. I jumped up, drawing eyes and hopefully the notice of security. What's going on? Do you own a puke brown shitty little Honda? Puke brown shitty Honda. Quite the wordsmith. Hmm, let me think. Yeah, why? I brought my hands to my chest as though ready to clutch my non-existent pearls. I'd be able to strike out faster if my hands were already up. A couple of guys picked up the TV trays and flung them to the sides, nearly smacking into the setup of the medium next to me. Mordecai went to grab one of the TV trays, his blanket blowing to the ground. No, leave it. Stand down. Do what she says if you know what's good for you. Calm down, mustache. Don't trouble yourself trying to threaten multiple defenseless persons. You look like you could use a break. My boss wants me to deliver a message. Holy smokes. Does your diet consist solely of raw garlic or what? Stay out of his parking spot. Another of Mustache's friends threw one of my rugs toward the water, then beat the remaining TV stand against the walkway. I found all that on the street, Lugnuts. You think this is my first rodeo? Do it again, and you'll be the one smashed on the ground. Yeah, except... no, I won't. This was when it would seriously be nice to have some useful magic. Because even if I was queen of the ghost whispers and had an army of spirits following me around, there wasn't a damn thing they could do to help me, besides drain a little energy from my attacker. But I knew how to present myself to bullies, no matter how stupid their facial hair. Despite my magical blood, I am protected in this establishment by the Articles of Coexistence Section 32.8. The... the... what? I have all the necessary up-to-date paperwork. I'm at least four feet from any other stall. And even if I weren't, I was here first. But... I parked in a space that was not clearly marked reserved. Said space had no signs or paint, informing me that I might not be able to park there. Therefore, there is no official claim on that space. And it is governed by the first-come, first-served policy. I was there first. It is mine. Oh, no. You are welcome to take me to court or to petition with the governing body of this fair. Both have been attempted. Both have failed. But still, with your impressive powers of oration, you might stand a chance. I let that work its way through his thick skull. Oh, and by the way, you wrangle magical beasts, do you not? Did you know that's illegal? It's a punishable offense. If you can't prove their origin and come up with a sales document verifiable by the magical governing body, do you have such a document? They likely did have a fake sales document, and no one would press them to go to the magical governing body. Still, it never hurt to remind these guys that they weren't the top of the food chain when dabbling with magical people. Not even close. Big words for a little girl. Actually, I kept the words as small as possible so you could understand. Should I try again? It's easier to beg for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. Mustache lifted his fist. I opened my mouth to scream at the kids to run. But suddenly, another large body was right beside me in a blur of movement, moving me behind him. A body that felt exactly as I'd imagined it would. It was the stalking stranger. He hadn't brought any friends. He stood alone against a group of five. If it bothered him even a smidgen, I sure as hell couldn't tell. The stranger lazily wrapped his fingers around Mustache's forearm. And though his arm wasn't as big, and he wasn't as tall, his strength and power easily toppled the other man's. The stranger shoved, and half of Mustache's body jerked backwards, forcing him to stagger sideways into one of his cronies. This woman is not to be touched. Not by anyone. Do you understand? 